Now we can go live. Hi, oh. everyone. Hello. How is everyone? <laughs> I just hit the button without even telling you. Yeah. We're live now. <laughs> yeah, surprise, surprise. That's fine. <laughs> How are you today, Rosa? Uh, yes, I'm good. Thank you. Um, I'm doing all right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how was your morning? Uh, um, I I slept in because I didn't hear my alarm. Oh, lucky! So I I woke up quite late. So I just had coffee and then started teaching. <laughs> oh, yes. That was one of my um, biggest fears: sleeping through a lesson. Well, yeah. Well, luckily, my my first lesson was. Uh, was at 12 so oh, <laughs> i had enough time <laughs> yes. uh, it would have been a problem if it had been at nine or something then mm -hmm. that would have been <laughs> exactly <laughs> difficult. but yeah i'm here i'm good and how about you um i'm doing well i also started at noon but i woke up at nine mm. so i had a morning i'm so hungry you're hungry. It, well, I guess it's almost lunchtime, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have one more of these webinars, and then, and then I can eat. Yeah, same. I think I have uh, this, and then I have another lesson afterwards. Wow how how is it going? The lessons on Zoom. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, um, oh, cool. one of the girls had some problems, so uh she, she well she turned up late and then couldn't speak so but apart from that hello uh, hi whoever is watching how are you hey, hi. good morning good morning afternoon where are you oh morning hi. afternoon yes i never know at this time of day me neither Tatiana hi. from St. petersburg russia but now i live in lyon france wow wow welcome tatiana Nice to see you. Yes, this may be an individual lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's having lunch. Yes, it's Tatiana's private lesson. <laughs> well, I'm excited. We have a an interesting lesson, I think, today. We do. I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, let's introduce ourselves. So, hi, Tatiana. My name is Shelly. I live in Milan. And I'm Rosa. I also live in Milan. We're in the Mayas Milan branch. Yes, we're in one of them. There are four. There are four Mayas schools in Milan. Are there no three? Three? Oh. Yeah. I yeah, thought yeah, there were four. I thought they'd no, they can't open the new one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there Maybe. might be a new one, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Mm. So and yeah. So, art Today. critic, do you like do you like art? Nice to meet you, Tatiana. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Do you um, like art, Tatiana? Are you interested in art? Do you like art, Rosa? I love art. I studied art. Wow. Uh, in high school, I I did the, what you call liceo artistico. Mm -hmm. which is uh, art high school so I I studied a lot of art history and I I now draw and paint I, wow. like, I like doing illustrations so uh, I think art is a big part of my life yes <laughs> and my parents are both artists as well, well artisans yeah that's well yeah cool that's so cool yeah my parents are accountants accountants <laughs> seventh art you mean seventh century tatiana the 17th century no seventh art not so sure what you it? mean seventh art no, and uh, are you do you like art are you interested well yes yeah, cinema nice yes 
I, I do, I do like art very much. Uh, however, I did not grow up in a very artistic household. Mm -hmm. So all of the art I learned, I learned because I wanted to learn. So I went to museums. I worked at a museum once when I was, uh -huh. in, yeah, when I was at university, I worked at a museum. Uh, I then, from then on, I just went to every museum that I possibly could. Uh, in, in San Francisco, there are three. Mm. So I bought memberships so I could go as often as I wanted. So sometimes I would go every oh, weekend. Wow. Yeah. Ah, that's amazing. Yes. Uh, they have things like memberships where you can go to museums as um, any member museum in Lom Lombardia, if I'm not mistaken, mm. and it only costs like 40 euros. I want one. A year. Yeah. Hmm, that's a really good deal. Yeah. Uh, and what's your favorite type of art? Do you have a favorite period or favorite favorite style? Oh wow! Uh, let's. So nice, Tatiana. Yeah. When I was a child, I went to art school for ten years. Wow. That's really cool. Uh, I I like art, contemporary art. Mm-hmm. So uh, contemporary and modern art, so after 1900. Okay, and do you have a favorite artist? Uh, I do, Jay DeFeo. DeFeo, I, not DeFeo, oh, no. I don't know him. Let me see if What's I can- What's his most away. famous art piece? Um, Jay is a female artist. Ah. Yeah, and she made a very giant, um, let me make sure I'm spelling this properly. She made a giant painting that's called The Rose, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like her, she, ma she made a lot of things, but she was very well known for these very large canvases that were like sculptures. So she would use layer paint like hmm. very slowly over a long period of time to create a sculpture uh, on a very giant canvas. Oh, wow, that sounds really cool. And Tatiana, who's your favorite artist or artistic period or movement? <laughs> Jay DeFeo. I must check her out. I don't think I know this artist. Yes, I went once to a museum that was doing her work and um, they had a large exhibit of her work throughout her life because she lived in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, and it was lovely. I just, I fell in love with her artwork. She did a lot of collage uh -huh. and um, a lot of sculpture painting. Nice. Yeah, how about you? What's your favorite art period? Hmm, it's uh, it's hard to say. I think, well, I I really like um, I really like Caravaggio. So that's what sixteen the sixteen hundreds. Yeah. Uh, I just think he because it's very realistic, and uh, I. I'm a little bit OCD in that. I pay a lot of attention to detail when I draw. So I really like the realistic um, paintings that he does. But I also like more modern things like graffiti art, Banksy, something like yeah. that. I think yeah. those are, are really interesting as well. I like many so, kinds of art. The most I like the documentary theater and cinema. The most I like, we can say my favorites are, mm -hmm. my favorites are. Yeah, documentary theater. Do you watch documentaries, um, Rosa? uh sometimes not uh, not often i i watch wildlife documentaries with uh um david attenborough yes BBC. So yeah it just it makes me feel 
comfortable and hugged and loved <laughs> listening to David Attenborough. <laughs> yes, yes. I like... Um, he just has like the best voice yeah. in the world, I think. <laughs> it really does. It's, yeah. Oh. I like Rembrandt for his sense of light. Wow, very interesting. Good job, Tatiana. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are there any Caravaggio paintings in Milan? I'm not sure. If um, I'm not mistaken, there are, but I don't there remember. Probably, uh, at the at the museums. I'm not sure. Yeah. Another another painter I really really love is uh, Chagall. Yes. Mark Chagall. I just love the colors he uses. They're so bright and wonderful. I just like yes. them. I love seeing his paintings because they're so familiar. Um, I, mm -hmm. Where I worked, the museum where I worked had one Chagall painting and it was in one of my favorite exhibits. So I saw it every day. Mm, that's really nice. And um, the Metropolitan Opera House mm -hmm. in New York has a giant Chagall painting. Mm. Huge, it's so lovely. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, Chagall, I, I really love as well. Just the the color the colors are so bright and vibrant. It's just yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah yes, Ooh. another <laughs> Chagall fan. Okay, so shall we see what we're up to? Absolutely. So today we will be talking about describing art, uh, the passive form and controversial art. Okay. Passive form, because when uh, we're talking about art and architecture in particular, it's uh, the focus is not so much on the subject, it's on the object, on the finished product, isn't it? Yes. So that's why we tend to use the passive form with uh, art and architecture, because it's not about the person, unfortunately, it's about the product. And controversial art, well, you know, art is so subjective. It's always going to have people that either love it or hate it. <laughs> yes. It's true, like um, I know many people who hate contemporary art. For example, um, a lot of the artwork at, we have the Fondazione Prada, mm. it's a lovely museum, but they have a lot of contemporary art and they love the architecture, but they don't like the art inside mm. because they don't understand it, I think. Yeah, well, that's the thing, that's uh, the, the risk of art as well as you know um sometimes it's ahead of its time so before people understand it it takes a while yeah and sometimes they never understand it but these mm -hmm. but they're still in museums yeah nice all right so and a good example very good oh, i forgot to write passive the second oh. is passive. That's all right. So I think we have a controversial art piece on the next page. Yeah, there it is. Yes, we do. So the physical impossibility of death in the mind of someone living. That's the title of this uh, art piece. It's true. So uh, Chagall painted a lot of opera houses, I guess. Uh, so uh, Tatiana says his fresques. In English, we called it a fresco. A fresco. Yes, we use. Is that the Italian word for? Uh, Italian is affresco. Oh, really? Affresco. Mm -hmm. Affresco. So, the American uh, I think fresco is probably French, as Tatiana mm -hmm. is living in France. And uh, yeah, in English, it's just fresco. Okay, so um, we have some questions here, I think. 
Yes, tell us in the comments what you think. Uh, we have another person. So we have Tatiana and a stranger. Hi, stranger. Tell us what you think. Is a shark art? It's a shark art. I think a shark is art. Sharks are, you know, so genetically perfect. They're just, they've been around for millions of years. And anything that values sharks, I'm all for. I love sharks. And so if we can uh, make people more aware of sharks and less scared and intimidated by them, then I'm I'm all for that. Yeah, me too. In this case, I think that the fact that they were able to suspend a shark in liquid this way so perfectly took a lot of work, a lot mm. of knowledge. They had to test it so many ways before. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if it's real. I think so. I think it might actually be. An actual white shark, that's a white shark. A great wine. Which is horrifying that someone would, well, they're, they don't work well in captivity. <laughs> mm. I don't know, let's find out. Let's find out if it really is. In the eyes of someone living. So Damien Hurst. Oh, it's a tiger shark. And tiger shark. Yes, so it is a shark. Yeah. It is preserved yeah. in formaldehyde. Yeah. Uh, you can't see the the lines on it. Kind on of. No, it's very small. You know, I've seen a tiger a tiger shark in real you life. Have. Yes. Where? In Borneo. Wow. Yeah. It swam away really fast. I chased it, but it swam away too fast. <laughs> I've seen a moray eel. Mm. And this, it peeked out behind a rock. And when I saw it, I swam so fast back to shore. <laughs> Moray eels are cool. Morays are They're amazing. Really cool. I just was afraid of it biting my fingers. <laughs> Uh, nah, they're fine. Tatiana says, why not? It depends on interpreting. Depends on uh, the interpretation. But yeah, good. Yeah. Very good. Yes, a shark provokes deep emotions. Ah, is a preserved shark art. This is the sort of thing you might see in a science museum. Mm, or a natural history. Yeah. I want to learn more about this. Where is it? I mean, I think it's in New York. Uh, at the Met in New York, Metropolitan Museum of Art. Oh, uh, it must have been on tour every time I've gone. <laughs> um, hmm. I need to stop looking and do the lesson. <laughs> Oh wow, is a preserved shark art? Is a preserved shark floating in a formaldehyde, floating in formaldehyde in a tank art? So formaldehyde I think is the, the liquid, the substance that they used. Um, this blue, mm -hmm. this blue substance that they used to, to keep it uh, preserved and you know, suspended, floating. Uh, which, uh, Shark, uh, okay, which question is it that you're not really understanding, Tatiana? I 
think these these questions are just uh, here to uh, let us talk and express our opinion mm -hmm. and uh, to see what we think. Second one is preserved is a preserved shark art. So preserved means uh, embalmed, you know. Oh yes, preserved. Uh... As in, it cannot decay. Mm, it cannot. Uh, it cannot. Um, yeah. What's a, a, a easier word for decay? Rot. Yeah, kept from decaying or rotting. So, yeah. from formaldehyde is the liquid used to prevent decay or rot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the question though here is, you know, is it sufficient to put a shark there in a tank and say, voila, this is my art piece? Or does an art piece have to be, you know, something that you create with your hands that, you know, huh, uh, like a painting, for example? I think maybe that's the question here. Yeah, there's another painting in another museum with a plastic shark behind glass called This Shark Is Not Art. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know the... Mm. Yeah, so... I think it wants to ask us if you think that's enough, that the artist has done enough uh, for us to call it art. So I read on Wikipedia that Damien Hurst, the artist, made a miniature one for the miniature museum, just like mm -hmm. this, but inside is a guppy. A guppy, that's one of the fish. It's a small fish. Yes. Mm. He made a miniature version of this with a guppy. <laughs> So that was so cute. The Fondazione Prada has some Damien Hirst works. Oh, really? Yes. I haven't, uh, I haven't been there yet. I haven't had a chance to go. If you do get a chance, right. it's lovely. Mm. So here's another controversial art piece called for the love of God. That's a strange title. Love of God. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to say it with a bit of emphasis. For the love of God. Okay, and this art piece, can someone describe it? Some our viewers, could they describe what is uh, this art piece? What is it? Do you, do you like this? Uh, do you like For the Love of God, uh, Ashali? Yes, it's shiny. Do you, you like it because it's shiny? <laughs> <laughs> it looks, it's very interesting. Uh, if I saw it in a museum, I would think of it as a very, like kind of a memento mori. So a memento mori is Remember you, that you will die. Yeah. It, people used to wear tokens of death on them so that they could remember to be better people <laughs> because they will die. It's knowing the inevitability. Mm. Yes, but what about all the bling? <laughs> I think... I think a memento mori can be pretty. Did you know that there are bejeweled... <laughs> Remember, you will die, but it's still pretty. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. No, did you know that there are saints in Germany? And it used to be more common practice in medieval times for people to put jewels on the skeletons of saints. 
So there are still some that exist in Germany, but they don't exist here because it was considered a little bit too uh, not befitting a saint. It was seemed it it was extravagant. Okay. Yeah, but in Germany you can go and see the skulls of saints covered in jewelry and silk. It's kind of cool. <clears throat> yeah, I, mean, I guess that makes sense because you know um saints and the church has always had a uh a, you know a symbolic meaning so for the love of god for the love of god is a bejeweled skull i butchered the spelling of bejeweled <laughs> i believe this is correct uh also another another word that i would uh, have uh used is uh it is cast so it's castened in diamonds is that how you say it uh yeah encased no mm, no no nothing never mind <laughs> um you know when you 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 put little holes and then you like fill them or something like a mosaic yeah oh i don't know the word for that but i'm sure there is, like i'm sure there is one yeah i'm sure as well i'm just gonna have to find it mm -hmm. what's that diana saying it makes me think about jan fabre Belgian artiste, a Belgian artist, no E. Uh, he did a lot of art creations about death. Nice. So he made a lot of art about death. I wonder if I've seen some of his work around. I'll keep an eye out. That's why I like art. You, you can see the same artist's work in different museums. And it's like meeting friends, you know? Mm. And you can see what the time period and you can see the cultural influences. Uh, you just have to keep going and see a yeah. lot. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> it's like a net where everything is uh, connected in some way. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> what are the questions? Oh, there it is. Mm. Cast in platinum. Cast. Okay, yeah, no, cast and cast. <laughs> cast equals covered, right? Mm hmm. Is a skull cast in platinum covered in diamonds art? <laughs> what do you feel when you look at it? this uh, skull yeah um I, i'm not really sure i mean yeah it's it's pretty <laughs> yeah it's uh it's prettier than a skull with no no diamonds i guess um i don't know would you would you use it as uh, as decoration in your house though? And I don't know. Would you cost? Or, I, would you spend the money on something like that? <laughs> no, not even not even a cheap one. Uh, yeah, it's not my style. I yeah, I mean, unless you're like a Mexican drug lord. <laughs> Ooh, maybe that's why it was made. So for yeah, it reminds me of the sugar skulls actually. That's why I'm thinking Mexican drug lord. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of too. The Dia de los Muertos. Mm. It's um the Day of the Dead in for them. They have a big celebration. <laughs> Uh, Tatiana says, I feel it was a really happy, smiley person. I think that too. He looks happy. 
Well, all skulls do though, right? Because they've got this just like the bones go up the way. So any yeah. skull you look at has uh, a, a, a smile really. Yeah. Have you ever been to one of the churches that have bones inside? I have not. I wanted to go uh, to the one in Naples, but mm -hmm. I'm a really scary part. Like I, I, I get scared very easily, not <laughs> and I don't all. know if I could cope in a place full of skulls. I think I would freak out and run away. Really, I think yeah. it's so impactful and touching. I, I never felt scared. So mm -hmm. I went to one in Rome. So it's a church and they cover, everything is covered in bones. It was mm -hmm. a monk who was mourning his friends uh, who had died during an epidemic or something. They didn't say how they died, but he mourned by creating these beautiful like altars with their bones. And okay. um, here, there's one. It used to be a children's hospital. So there's a lot of um, like skulls and then large bones from the legs and mm. it covers the walls. It's, um, I believe near San Babala. Okay. Yeah, you can, you, you can just walk in, it's free. Mm. Nice. And well, maybe not small. nice, I don't know. I really can't decide <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if I would like it or if I would be, uh scared and freaked out and would want to run away i'm not sure yeah tatiana are you scared of skulls and bones i did see which was uh really really uh amazing actually so in naples i went to see uh the cristo velato mm. which is uh in the cappella di san severo uh, mm -hmm. which is, is a marble skull, sculpture, but uh, which is amazing. But underneath, uh, there's a sort of, um, I don't know, what you call the, the rooms downstairs in a church? The, a crypt? Yeah, in a crypt. Um, there's these two mannequins. Mm -hmm. And... They basically were a science experiment by this uh, count who used to do alchemy and stuff. And he basically preserved the entire nervous system of two of his servants. And so it's a body, mm -hmm. but it's just the nervous system. Wow, I've seen no bones, no nothing. Oh God, no! <laughs> uh, it's pretty disgusting, but also interesting. So the the two mannequins they have there now are um, are not the original uh, nervous system; they're recreations of what yeah, they were. Being, but but they don't it's eat, still no. really impactful. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah. that's probably the closest thing I have seen to like human bodies and Egyptian museums with like mummies. Yeah. Uh, that also. I do like those. Uh, no, see, I'm, I'm I just like, I get shivers just thinking about it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Tatiana um, says that she realizes the vanity of life. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. I mean, I don't know if I would ever spend the money to buy something like that. And like, I have, it seems a little bit pointless to me. Like, why? You're going to die anyway. You might as well spend it on food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see. Oh yeah, we have an activity for you, Tatiana. Yeah. Tatiana, um, you're so lucky, you have a double lesson. <laughs> yes, with two teachers. Two teachers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so describing art. Match the words to the categories. So you have 
rough, bold, asymmetrical, smooth, modern, abstract, realistic, balanced, distorted, vibrant, uneven, and subtle. We have four categories. So we have color, texture, style, and composition. So which words do you think belong to each of the categories? So, for example, if you describe yeah, <laughs> if you describe uh, something as rough, are we talking about the color, the texture, the style, or the composition? So we'll give you a moment to think about that. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll do it uh, uh, and see if you can uh, match them to one another. Yes. How many years do you study composition when you study art in school? Mm. So, uh, I'm not really sure how to answer that. Because the answer is, <laughs> we... uh, I mean, what do you mean by composition? Like, like I know how that... elements okay. are placed on a page? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you ever really stop studying it because it's... And that's okay, you know, yeah. like... Oh, some answers coming in. Yeah. So we have bold, oh. texture, rough, style. Mm. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, like, for example, I know for beginning art classes, um, there was one professor who, I never took art classes per se, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a couple theater classes, but never like canvas art. Um, and there was one teacher who said like, you have to put three boxes on a white space and you can make the boxes any size you want. They just have to be boxes. And so she had the students create compositions by varying the sizes, by like putting them side by side. And they had to make like a ridiculous number, like 20. And that's how they studied composition. So then they could compare it to other paintings that they had done or like not they had done, but just other paintings in general. Like here's a composition where it's like, I'm on one side. The composition is unbalanced because I am here. <laughs> oh, Rosa's disappeared. And she's back. Yeah, I'm having some <laughs> internet problems. Sorry, guys. No, it's fine. Um, if, um, if anything, uh, I'm, I'm good here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So shall know. we go just, through it? Just a glitch. Yeah. So rough. I would say that's texture and bold. I would think of colors. So you would have bold colors, for example, yellow and orange, something that punches. What I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah, bold <laughs> colors, bright colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, asymmetrical. asymmetrical Tatiana, yes, is uh, exactly. definitely composition. Smooth is the opposite of rough, so texture. Well, that's a good way to so think. So even that. paper, you know, you have smooth paper or you have rough paper, good for watercolors, for example. Or you have smooth paint, so for example, an oil painting. Uh, can be very smooth, but then if you have an oil painting like Monet, for example, that's very rough, you know, it's very, uh, it has a lot of material, a lot of mass to it. Mm -hmm. mm. Then modern style, abstract, also style. Nice. Abstract. At the end, I think this is a style. Hmm. It's then, yeah. You're talking about like abstract art rather than. I mean, can a, a composition be abstract? I think. I guess. I mean, if you think 
think of Picasso, for example, his composition was pretty abstract. Yeah. Because, you know, he put bits and pieces where they weren't supposed to be. Right. I guess if you think it about it, in that period, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't see why not. However, if you think about it, like now, composition is where things are on the page, like in the contemporary. Yeah. yeah, it's the balance you have on a page. So as you were saying, yeah, you know, uh, how to divide the, the sections of your um, yeah. There's a lot of answers, I think, or a lot of ways that we can put things. Yeah, I yeah. think so. And your artistic as well, style. But I don't see why a, a composition couldn't be realistic, you know? Could be. Exactly. A realistic composition, realistically composed. Yeah, so if you, if you think of, you know, the classic fruit on a plate, mm -hmm. it's realistic. All right, distorted, vibrant colors. So again, bold, vibrant, bright. Yeah. Uneven, I think, is texture, and subtle is colors. Yeah. Yes. So that's what we've got. So colors, nice. bold, vibrant, and subtle. Texture is rough, smooth, and uneven. Style, modern, abstract, realistic. And composition, asymmetrical, balanced, and distorted. Uh, do you, if you have any questions about what any of these words mean, let us know. Uh, feel free to ask. And can you think of anything else? So, so if I think of colors, another... Uh, Another thing I would, another way I would describe colors is warm or cool colors. Mm -hmm. So warm belong to the red, orange, yellow sort of side, and mm -hmm. cool colors are blues and purples and greens. Um, I would think monochromatic. Nice, monochromatic, so for example, a black and white painting or on grayscale. Ah, oh, that's excellent. Nuanced colors, nice. Uh, for textures as well, there are so many more textures you could okay. have. Rough, smooth, uneven. Polished. Oh, nice. Shiny. Shiny. Uh, what would you say about like wood? Uh -huh. <laughs> I use them in my previous webinar, they're knitting needles. So I might say rough. That covers a lot of things. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. These are smooth. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Composition, asymmetrical balance, distorted. Distorted? Mm hmm So distorted is, um, how would you describe the word distorted? A, a, a skew? Yeah. Skew or um, you have Figure. a regular shape, and then if it's distorted, then you enlarge Figure. or deformed. Yeah. Twisted. Warped. Are you looking at a synonym page? <laughs> I, I was gonna say, wow, Rosa, you're a dictionary. <laughs> no, I had I had a couple, and then I did double check uh, just to see if we were on the right on the right track. Sorry, 
Um, okay. Uh, what is the oh. difference between smooth and uneven? So smooth is uh, completely flat. Yeah, so like the surface. Well, uneven. Hmm. Uneven means there is some uh, levels. So for example, uh, in if you're in Rome, uh, some some roads are smooth because they have asphalt on them, but then some roads are uneven. So if you think of roads with stones on them, those are <laughs> uneven. So probably a better example. I'm like, nope, that's smooth. Nope, that's smooth. What else? What do I have that's uneven? <laughs> Here, this surface, the surface of my cookie is uneven. Okay, the difference between rough and uneven. uneven. Ah. So rough is something that is rough to touch. For example, the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's scratchy. Or like it what? doesn't feel smooth on your fingers, and uneven means on different levels. So yeah, so uneven, like my glasses are uneven or askew. Yeah, not straight, but rough is more about uh, just the texture in general, mm -hmm. how it feels. I think uneven is more uh structural cool all right so what have we got uh what's um we have three minutes left yeah we, let's review okay so we've talked about uh these words mm -hmm. I'm fuzzy no no, uneven is like, this is a flat surface. An even surface bounces my pen. An uneven surface, and it'll drop off. Mm. So this is uneven. This is even. It's also smooth. <laughs> smooth is the opposite of rough. So rough might be if you wash your hands a lot, the feeling when, it, when your hands get scaly and hard that's rough oh, in winter yeah when you have dry skin or if you go or out someone that works in, you wash your hands. In, the, in the garden a lot or something yeah the hands of a builder are rough but the hands of someone that works on a computer every day they're very smooth we have a saying in English, as smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Which means very smooth skin, soft. <laughs> That's a funny one. I haven't thought of that in a while. <laughs> but it's very common. Lots of people say oh, yeah. it, I think. It's, it's very... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, uh, so we talked about all of these wonderful words used to describe art. Um, we talked about arguments for and against art and art movements. Is this art? We defended our arguments. That was great. And we talked a little bit about active and passive. Mm -hmm. So the active form where the subject, there's a subject, and then in the passive form, the subject and the ob object switch roles. Yes, so the subject um, of an active sentence would be the artist. The artist creates the art of a passive mm -hmm. sentence. The art, the object, is created by the subject, the artist. We hope that was clear. <laughs> <laughs> Let me type it out and then we'll say we'll say bye to Tatiana. Bye. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs>
I want some of your biscuits. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I want to finish that. So bye, Tatiana. It was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much, Tatiana. <laughs> bye. See you soon. It was great to see you.